This is a really exciting episode of Funding Awesome. Most people know that NVIDIA builds AI chips for data centers and supercomputers, but I'm going to give you an inside look at their next generation Blackwell GPUs, which are about to change everything. While I was at NVIDIA GTC, I had the privilege of interviewing Dion Harris, NVIDIA's Director of Accelerated Computing Go-To-Market. I used that time to dive into every part of the Blackwell compute stack, including NVIDIA's Blackwell GPUs themselves, the Grace CPU and Grace Blackwell Super Chips, how they come together to make a supercomputer in a single rack, and the insane amounts of compute NVIDIA's Blackwell architecture can achieve. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. Hi, I'm Dion Harris, Director of Accelerated Computing Go to Market here at NVIDIA. So today, we're going to start with the Blackwell GPU and work all the way up to the GB200 NVL72, the full rack scale Grace Blackwell powered system recently announced here at GTC. I'm super excited for this. Absolutely. So it starts with our Blackwell GPU. Again, that's 20,000 teraflops of AI performance. And so it allows us to have this 192 gigs of HBM 3E memory, all accessed via our NVLink C2C across both of these GPUs and all connected with the Grace CPU. There's one Grace, there's two Blackwells. What's the reasoning behind that? Absolutely. So when you look at the, the Grace Blackwell Super Chip, it involves two Blackwell GPUs connected via our NVLink C2C to a Grace CPU. Yeah. And the reason behind that, when we look at a lot of our, our most robust AI workloads, they're really heavy on our GPUs. So we Got really it. saw the balance of, of the workload being shifted more to the GPUs. And so we wanted to build a super chip that could reflect that as well. So sure. a lot of customers, rather than having to buy a super chip with a CPU that isn't fully utilized, we could leverage this architecture. So we started with the Blackwell. Can you tell us a little bit about Grace? Absolutely. So this Grace CPU, it's, it's the same one that we had highlighted for, for Grace Hopper. Sure. And the incredible thing about this is it's incredibly energy efficient. It's about two times as energy efficient as traditional um, x86 CPUs. And a lot of that is because of the LPDDR5 memory that we use within this, this uh, CPU. Sure. And the incredible thing about it is it gives access to the GPUs to over 480 gigs of memory. So that allows you know, your high-end LLMs and, and AI models that require lots of data to access that data over our NVLink C2C and essentially act as a seamless CPU-GPU combination. Seamless CPU-GPU. So that means you can just go back and forth depending on what the workload is. There's some way that these guys are connected, I'm sure, under this board, and it's automatically load balancing. Oh, this workload's better for the GPU. Oh, this one's better for a CPU. Yes. And it's doing all that on the fly. So what's happening is as you start to leverage the, the workload itself, the application is usually determining that. And so in other words, it's all connected, like I mentioned, via the NVLink C2C. And so it's a connection that's you know, seven times faster than, than, than traditional PCIe and allows the data movement across the CPU and GPU to happen very seamlessly. So to the application, it's almost as if you had 480 gigs of memory running on the Whoa. actual GPU itself. Got it, and that's just this half, right? So now, you know, you are these two halves connected at all, or do they just run in parallel? So this is one Grace Blackwell uh, module, Yep. and this is also another Grace Blackwell Superchip module, and they're all connected via NVLink. So there's an NVLink connection from this side to this side as well? So this is actually, to talk to each other, they typically go out of the system in order to talk to the other GPUs. Okay. And so this is where you have your NVLink connections going out and they feed into that NVLink spine that we'll talk about yeah, a little bit sure. later. And they allow them all to talk to and talk to each other at the all to all full line rate, 1.8 terabits a second. Gosh. So it's you know pretty pretty incredible in yeah. terms of all the all the data flowing across the system. The numbers are mind boggling. Indeed. Okay, Indeed. so Blackwell, Grace, what is the rest of this board? The rest of this board involves pretty much getting the information out of these compute modules into that NVLink spine, right? And so you have your Got NVLink it. connections here, which then go out and connect into our NVLink switch, which then gives you all the, the connectivity across the full, full network. We awesome. also have um, multiple NVLink chips within the system as well that basically connect to that NVLink spine and allow you to have that communication at full line rate. When you look at this entire system, you have literally 80 thousand teraflops of performance within a single compute node. Incredible compute density, incredible compute performance, 
and efficiency all delivered in, in one server node that you can then plug into the overall MB Link system to create that full rack scale system awesome. that we're building up to. The one thing I will highlight as well that's not shown here is the liquid cooling elements of okay. it. So that's another key, pe key piece of the architecture that we have to implement in order to, to, to deliver the compute density required for this system. So we use liquid cooling that, that gives you incredible um, density because again, you don't have to have the heat sinks that create additional um, rack requirements, but then it also allows you to have it packed tighter that gives you all the networking efficiencies that we talked about in terms of being able to leverage copper as opposed to fiber optics. So it's all purpose built to be, you know, highly performant, very dense, and also very compact. Sure, um, which is why cooling is so important, right? Absolutely, yeah. and the energy efficiency of this system is, is something that we really thought about going into it, is how do we maximize the performance to the compute and not to the, the power and cooling. Oh, that's awesome. So this tray looks pretty different. What's, what is this as opposed to the Grace Blackwells we just saw? So this is basically the, the, the range that connects all of those systems together. So this is our NVLink uh, switch chips that we announced in the keynote as well. And so this allows all of those NVLink connected GPUs to talk to each other. We have nine of these trays that connect all 72 of those GPUs over NVLink. And so these cables look pretty special too. Can you tell me a little bit about what these are as opposed to the ones we saw on the other side? Yeah, and so basically we built these 30s to, uh, to, to allow these chips to talk to each other at 1.8 terabytes per second across these four channels. Um, going out and they represent, you know, connections to four of those those GPUs that are that were on the other trade that we talked about. Can you help me comprehend how fast 1.8 terabytes per second is? Like, that sounds... You know, blazing fast. You, you know when you aggregate it at the full system level, they say it's about 30 terabytes per second, which is more than the entire internet traffic. So you can send the entire internet in about a second. That's mind blowing. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> It is, so yeah, but, but definitely you know, needed given the requirements of today's models and the requirements of today's workloads. This is really what we saw as, as a need and requirement to deliver the performance that would get you to the next level in terms of servicing the next gen AI models. Sure, okay, so this isn't just about today's workloads, this is also about tomorrow's workloads as well and future proofing for those. Absolutely, Okay. absolutely. That's great as we said, it's, it's for the trillion scale parameter models. So, so when you think about how the models are evolving over time, um, they're becoming more complex, larger in a lot of cases. Sure. And that's requiring more memory, more compute, more bandwidth. And so we've optimized the full system to start to enable those models today. That's wild. That's awesome. So, okay, so, so far, Grace Blackwell, we saw those trays. Yep. These are the NVLink trays for networking those all together. What's next? Okay. Let's go take a look at how this comes together in a rack scale system. Awesome. Okay. So here we're standing in front of the NVIDIA GB200 MVL72. And what's incredible cool. about this system, like I said, you have um, 18 compute nodes, all of which have four Blackwell uh, GPUs in them, as well as two gray CPUs in them. So in combination, you have 72 Blackwell GPUs, 36 gray CPUs, all interconnected, behaving as one single compute system. Whoa. And so just to break that down a little bit, you can see that these are the compute trays that we covered over there. You wanna come in? So you have 10 on the top, and you have eight on the bottom here. Okay. And then those MB-Link switch trays that we just talked about a second ago, you have nine of those connecting here. Oh, I see, yeah, the interfaces on the outside are actually different. So the networking trays are in the middle, exactly. and the computes are on the top and the bottom. Exactly, so you got 10 compute trays here, eight there. So what we're looking at, you can see that this is basically an interface for the front end. Because like we talked about before, you have your NVLink connections that are all going out through the back end. In fact, we can walk around the back and take a look to see how those fiber cables um, you know, connect it all. And it's, and it's an incredible sight to see. Sure, let's take a look. So this is the back. And this is the MVLeak spine. And this is sort of a, a brand new invention and, and architectural innovation that allows you to have instant connectivity and cabling. So think of it like a docking station. Okay. You literally take those compute trays and you plug them in. They have industrial connection points that automatically latch in and connect to the wiring and the cabling that's already installed. And this cabling looks pretty special too. Can you tell me a little bit more about the, like, the actual cabling we're seeing? Absolutely. So this is the NVLink 
uh, connection points. And again, you have over 500 MB link connections, over two miles of cabling. Two miles? Yes. So, oh my so gosh. again, you think about what's happening here, it's connecting every GPU to every other GPU in this system. And, and this, this is exactly what allows it to behave as a single GPU. So every single Whoa. GPU can access the memory on every other GPU at that full 1.8 terabits a second line rate. So when we say that this is one GPU, it's truly when you're building an application, when you're, when you're deploying models, it doesn't care if it's on GPU one versus GPU 72, it can still access the, those data points at the same speed. And okay, so what, what are these thick cables here? Is that power, is that co cooling, what is that? This is the liquid cooling. And one of the things that allows us to create such compute density to put over an exaflop of compute in a single rack is by leveraging liquid cooling. And so this is a unique opportunity for us to sort of, you know, advance um, computing and compute density, but also reduce the cost. So that's another key element when we look at how we're using liquid cooling, how we're using sort of this copper-based cabling system. It's all designed to deliver optimal performance at the lowest cost with the best efficiency. And I'm noticing cables on the top there as well, right? Absolutely. So how do they connect to multiple routes? Let's go back around the front. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so now let's look at some of the ports coming in and out of the system here on the front tray. So we have our InfiniBand switches that we'll typically have as top of rack switches. Like we talked about, MB-Link goes to the back and those are all connected on that MB-Link spine. Yeah. However, when you start to put multiple of these racks together, you can still leverage InfiniBand. InfiniBand, yep. And so we have our latest um, InfiniBand switches that we highlighted at, in the keynote, which are pushing over 800 gigabits per second. And you can basically have these links. If you look at, you see you have four there on yeah. the top side. Those are coming out of each GPU. And so each of those connect to, a, to its own individual port as well. Whoa. So you have 70, 72 ports coming out of this front end that connects to that top rack switch, which then goes into your fat tree network to connect all of those racks, all of those GPUs together. Got it. And so I know NVIDIA has sort of two networking products at this level, right? Yes. One is InfiniBand and one is Ethernet. Yes. Can you help me understand the difference between those two? Absolutely. It's, it's really a matter of choice, right? So some customers in their data center, they want to deploy Ethernet to, to have a seamless uh, management capability if they're running most of their systems on Ethernet. A lot yeah. of times uh, hyperscalers will do that just for simplicity. And so we've, de we've developed our Spectrum X platform, which allows you to have an AI capable network. And what that means is when you have um, IP-based networking, oftentimes it hasn't been as applicable for AI because you get congestion, you get noise neighbor sure. issues. And so because of the performance characteristics of AI, it doesn't re really tolerate that. So we've, in, we've built in a number of resiliency um, capabilities, like we have packet reordering, we have adaptive routing, we have in-network computing that we built into our IP-based network. Yeah. So now you get all of those manageability benefits that we have on our InfiniBand side also on the spectrum side. That's so it's awesome. really just a matter of choice. The other thing that we've done as well, we have some ports for our DPUs. Okay. And so when you think about how your system interfaces with, with the other systems in your data center, there's also east-west traffic connecting to other compute nodes, but there's also north-south traffic connecting to storage, for example. Sure. And so we basically implemented our Bluefield DPUs, and you can see these connection points here on the right, okay. which basically help you do a lot of that north-south traffic management. Yeah. And what's really cool about this is it gives you security and isolation in addition to performance, because you're able to offload some of those tasks that perform best in the network, for example, like all reduce calculations that happen, we're able to do those within with the switching computing network to offload that from, from your compute network, but it also provides security isolation and performance isolation. Got it. So again, we have our CPUs, yep. our GPUs. And our DPUs. And our DPUs. Okay. Basically all, all helping to you know, deliver the solution. And DPUs are data processing units? or Correct. And that's exactly. all about like data transfer, actually, right? That's all like a... Exactly. Because I know that's an expensive thing to do, move data from chip to chip, right? Yeah. And this is basically acts as an interface to bring the data in. It, it, act, it interacts with the CPU complex to basically move it in, and then that's how you get it, rot it through the GPUs. Your DPU acts as a gateway, if you will, to really make sure you can ensure security, but also optimize performance by having some of those data movement functions isolated and centralized within the DPU. Got it, awesome. And then one last thing, so this is one rack. Yes. I know what's behind us is our hopper racks, yeah. but can we go and like talk a little bit about the rack scale at those racks? Absolutely, that be okay? yeah, absolutely. Let's go take a look at Grace Hopper. Let's sure. do it. 
So, so this is our Grace Hopper MGX based system. And so back in Computex last year, we announced something called MGX. Yeah. Which is basically a reference architecture that allows all of our OEMs and ODM partners to build systems and servers that are optimized for accelerated computing. And that's really at the tray level, right? Or at the tray level. Yeah. And so what this represents, in this case, we're actually showing Grace Hopper and let's see if we can pull these guys out. We can Ooh, take a look cool. and see what's in here. So. When you look at what this, you have two Grace Hopper super chips that also have liquid cooling. So just like the Grace Blackwell system yeah. that we we're highlighting, again, giving you incredible performance density and compute density, but also giving you efficiency as well. So you have your two Grace Hopper super chips that are connected. And in this case, they're connected via um, InfiniBand. Yeah. And so you don't have the NVLink spine to, to provide the all-to-all -all communication that we we're describing. Yeah. But this is still an incredible way to scale and get incredible compute density, but also using our MGX form factor, which allows all of our partners to quickly ramp up on our latest and greatest um, GPUs. So we'll have an MGX platform that will also be for Blackwell Got that it. will allow these guys to instantly embrace our latest and greatest. So you can literally solutions. take this tray out and slide a Blackwell version of the tray that we saw earlier in. Exactly. So it makes it easier for our partners, it makes it easier for our customers to adopt our, our latest technology. Yeah. yeah. And then when, whether you're using the InfiniBand solution or the Ethernet solution up here in the Blackwell version, yes. that's how you connect all of these racks together, right? Yes. So. And you can see here, like I said, you have the connection points going out to those top of rack switches up there. Yeah, and so. we saw the equivalent of these on the Blackwell system over there. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So how many of these can you stitch together? How big can so, this get? As big as you like. I mean, yeah. quite honestly, when you look at sort of how this, this system is architected, it really starts to become a matter of how you've architected your data center, right? Because okay. some of this is going to be more power dependent because the compute density and the power density, it basically requires you know people to be very thoughtful about how they're building out their data centers, sure. how they're cabling their racks, how they're powering their racks. Probably how they're cooling it too, right? That Exactly, yeah. exactly. So then, this is where we're working with a lot of our data center infrastructure partners to build reference designs to help people as they're architecting their data center, they can look at this, this rack and say, okay, this is the amount of power I require, this is the amount of cabling connection I require, this amount of space I have, the weighting on the floor, all of those dimensions are taken into account. And then that tells you sort of how you want to build out your data center. But in terms of scale, you know, you can go to, you know, multiple layers of fat tree um, networking topologies to get you thousands, tens of thousands oh. of these GPUs all interconnected via InfiniBand and or the spectrum networking. That's program. awesome. And yeah. so what's what's the idea here? Will we see a new supercomputer built on the Blackwell versions of these, like we saw at EOS? NVIDIA is building our own data center you know, right now as we speak. Okay. And we plan to deploy over 32,000 um, Grace Whoa. Blackwells into a single, single data center. And so we're building that out. Um, during the keynote, we showcased sort of this as we were doing the build up. That last shot, which showed that full-on yeah, data center yeah. view, is not just a cartoon. It is our a digital twin of the data center that we're actually building. Oh, wow. And so we're leveraging, again, all of these technologies we talked about. We're leveraging the Blackwell GPU. We're leveraging the Grace CPU and the Grace Blackwell Superchip module. Of course, we have the compute tray, and then that's building up and connected via that NVLink network infrastructure. And all of that is then connected via our quantum X800 um, InfiniBand switches to then they give you that full-on 32,000 Blackwell GPU system. And so, then can you tell us a little bit about what you plan to use all that for? That sounds incredible. Well, NVIDIA is very much a practitioner of AI. We don't just build, you know, compute. We actually build models, we train models, we use yeah. it for our self-driving self um, car model development. We use it for a lot of LLM model development. So all the work that we do with our customers and partners, we're doing it ourselves. Yeah. And so that gives us a new informed view of how we should build and optimize you know, the infrastructure that we build, but it also allows us to make real contributions beyond just the hardware. Yeah, you get a whole different level of insights when you're a user, not just a builder, right? I exactly. Yeah, exactly. for sure. This has been amazing. Thanks for walking us through uh, Blackwell, through Grace, through the NVLink switches, through the full rack, and then the multi-rack scale, you know, all the way up to supercomputers. I really appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. A huge thank you to Dion Harris for walking us through NVIDIA's entire Blackwell architecture, the GPUs, CPUs, and DPUs, the Grace Blackwell superchips, 
NVLink and Quantum InfiniBand, and how it all comes together to create mind-blowing compute power for the next generation of AI applications. Another big thank you to NVIDIA for inviting me to GTC to learn everything I can in person and share it with all of you. And of course, thank you for supporting the channel. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.